Right now, people don't have, uh, that is, institutional investors don't have any easy way to support Bitcoin or buy it in an, in an economically responsible fashion. And so they just stay out. When you see these spot ETFs uh, get put in place, you're going to be creating the equivalent of a six-lane superhighway between Wall Street and Bitcoin. And now you're going to see billions and billions of dollars flow. In some cases, billions a week. In some cases, could be billions a day. And until you see it, you won't see, you won't see any capital flow from those institutions. It's trapped in the 20th century asset classes. Amidst the current anticipation of spot Bitcoin ETFs potentially becoming the next major catalyst in the cryptocurrency landscape, Michael Saylor, co-founder of MicroStrategy and a staunch Bitcoin advocate, sheds light on a critical gap that underscores the necessity for spot ETF approval. Saylor firmly believes that a spot Bitcoin ETF is poised to become the most significant catalyst for the Bitcoin market. This perspective comes as a surprise considering that all eyes were previously focused on Bitcoin's future prospects, especially with recent developments in ETF filings including misleading news of an approval that caused a substantial Bitcoin price surge. With hopes soaring and the crypto community eagerly awaiting spot Bitcoin ETF approval, the landscape remains in a state of anticipation. Of particular interest is how MicroStrategy, the world's largest institutional holder of Bitcoin, will adjust its acquisition strategy once a spot ETF becomes a reality. Institutions such as BlackRock and Fidelity would need to amass substantial quantities of Bitcoin to operate these ETFs, triggering a surge in demand for the cryptocurrency. In the video, Michael Saylor outlines his plans for ETFs and envisions a future for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. You know, I've said many times before, I've said, if it's not going to zero, it's going to a million. The reason it would go to zero is it's illegitimate or getting banned. And so the question is, is it illegitimate? Well, obviously not. It's an asset without an issuer. It's the world's first digital commodity and the greatest digital commodity. It's the only uh, globally acknowledged digital commodity in the world. There is controversy about everything else. Bitcoin is the one non-controversial thing. So it is a legitimate asset. And is it being banned? Obviously not. The Chinese haven't banned it. It's, it's deemed property in China. The Russians haven't banned it, it's property in Russia. The Americans haven't banned it, it's property in America. All of the controversy in our, in our marketplace right now is surrounding crypto exchanges, the trading of unregistered securities, other tokens, and stable coins. And, and then the usage of these crypto tokens as a high-speed dollar substitute, a, a currency substitute. There's lots of controversy there. There will continue to be controversy. Uh, it is unclear how all that sorts itself out, except for the fact that there are two great uh, conclusions you can come to over the past 24 months. Uh, Wall Street, the regulators, and the mainstream investment community endorses Bitcoin and appreciates Bitcoin. And everybody's skeptical of the rest of the crypto ecosystem. Right? Bitcoin, yes. Crypto, not so sure. Right? So, so that's where we are right now. Um, I, I, I have met with lots of, lots of executives from these companies that are bringing uh, spot ETFs to market. I can tell you for a fact, nobody wants to fix Bitcoin. Nobody wants to change Bitcoin. They've approached it with humility. They've approached it with grace. Their view is Bitcoin is a digital asset. People in the world seem to want it. Um, we should do our part to provide services to make it easy to acquire and hold Bitcoin. Now, in, in time, right, uh, the, the first and easiest step and the most critical step is that spot ETF because that'll open up the, the super highway for, it's like a power, a power line for hundreds of billions of dollars of capital to flow into the ecosystem. But eventually, Google and Apple will embrace Bitcoin. And when Google or Apple embraces Bitcoin and Apple puts some sort of Bitcoin signing device into the iPhone, there will be some people that will be skeptical and they will say, oh, we could never trust Apple. And that's reasonable. 
And other people will say, oh, it's an option for the masses that don't know how to you know, operate their own hardware wallet. And there'll be a debate. And then, and then there'll be an avalanche and then Apple, you know, the Amazon will do something and then Microsoft will build it into their browser and then people will hate that. And then some other company will come up with a better Bitcoin only one and we'll like that. And maybe they'll succeed and they'll grow and be 10 or 100 X and maybe they won't. And then maybe at some point we'll wake up and there'll be $4 billion, which will be of, of 4 billion people. And they will self custody some amount of their own Bitcoin. And then they will have other Bitcoin that will be in an ETF in their retirement plan because their employer required that they actually have their retirement plan uh, with a securities custodian. And, and the world will be heterogeneous. And every, you know, we should embrace everybody that supports Bitcoin, however they support Bitcoin. You won't agree with them. Maybe you won't like that nation and you won't like that company and you won't like that money manager. And you will always have the option to do your own thing. And that's what makes Bitcoin beautiful. The SEC has, until now, been resistant to approving spot Bitcoin ETFs, citing concerns related to fraud and market manipulation. However, there is a recent development as the SEC indicated that it won't challenge a notable court ruling that could open the path for the $8.4 billion grayscale Bitcoin trust to transition into an ETF. Bloomberg Intelligence has noted that the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF appears increasingly likely, and several funds are expected to receive regulatory approval. Nevertheless, the precise timing of these approvals remains uncertain. Michael Saylor underscores the paramount importance of a Bitcoin ETF approval for the cryptocurrency ecosystem. He regards the spot ETF as the primary milestone crucial for Bitcoin to achieve widespread global acceptance. In the video, he shares his insights on this matter. The most important one, the one that's going to dominate this cycle, is going to be the spot ETF. Because futures ETFs are just literally defective, right? If, if I said I'm going to charge you a 10% fee per year to invest your money, like your money's gone in seven years, right? I'm just taking it all, right? So, so uh, that makes no sense. So the spot ETF is going to be critical. It's going to solve the problem of, of how do I custody the Bitcoin? M most of these companies uh, and investors, if, if they want to establish their own custody program, it's, it's very scary, right? Have you noticed how many custodians have failed? And the issue is, how do I find an institutional grade custodian? And okay, well, you could say like you should self custody. Well, how does, you know, who at Microsoft is supposed to self custody? Like, do you want to get, you, you're going to give $100 billion of Bitcoin to, to the CFO and have the CFO walk around with the private keys? Like, who wants that job, right? Like, how are you going to, you're going to do multi-sig? Well, which three people at Microsoft, right? So it becomes a question and it takes them a year or two years to answer the question. And is it possible? Sure it is. It just takes two or three years. And so if, if we want mass adoption, we have to solve the problem of custody and then we have to solve the problem of compliance, right? If, if I'm an investor and I have $10 billion of capital and I want to buy $100 million worth of Apple stock, I can do it in 30 seconds via BlackRock or via one of my major money managers. And I don't even have to, I don't even have to come up with $100 million. I could, I could have a nickel make a phone call and say, buy $100 million of Apple stock, put the phone down, and have all the money at the end of the day without putting up in cash. And it would be my bank, like JP Morgan, that would front me the money. So you see, it's completely financeable, no money down. I can do it in 30 seconds. And then it flows into my systems, like my accounting system, my compensation system. When Apple stock doubles, the portfolio manager that actually made the buy wants to get paid. So how do I attribute the success of the investment to the person that made the investment when it's changing every minute of the day? How do I pay taxes on it? How do I, how do I make sure I don't, how do I make sure I don't have a Nick Leeson situation where one portfolio manager makes a $10 billion bet and bankrupts the entire firm, right? So these are all pedestrian problems, but they're solved by that spot ETF plugged into the money manager. That's going to be the number one driver.
right? And, and that's going to dwarf everything else in the near term. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has imposed a $2.5 million fine on BlackRock Advisor, the world's largest asset manager. This action coincided with the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation listing a spot Bitcoin ETF, although the DDCC clarified that the ETF had been listed since August and that its listing didn't imply regulatory approval. The SEC's charges against BlackRock revolved around the asset manager's failure to accurately describe investments in the entertainment industry within a publicly traded fund it managed. Specifically, between 2015 and 2019, BlackRock Multi-Sector Income Trust made substantial investments in a print and advertising business, Aaron Group, involved in film production. The SEC alleged that BlackRock inaccurately characterized Aaron's business in public reports and misrepresented its interest rate. BlackRock later corrected these errors. While unrelated to the cryptocurrency sphere, BlackRock has been a prominent figure in the crypto world due to its proposed Bitcoin exchange-traded fund. The appearance of BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF on the DCC platform led to speculation about its approval. However, it was clarified that the ETF had been listed since August and did not indicate regulatory endorsement. The community remains uncertain about whether the charges against BlackRock would affect the approval of their Bitcoin ETF. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.